Let's find. Let's find Elizabeth a game. Humble bundle. Mm -mm -mm. Uh, I don't know. You want something from this month? Uh, Elizabeth, would you like? Uh, I'm going to give you a choice. Um, uh, hmm, I have no idea what most of these things are. Uh, so one that looks like an 80s kind of action game. Yeah. Okay, eighties action game or um, creepy, creepy but action <laughs> might be creepy, might not be good. I don't know. Do you scare easily, Elizabeth? Do you, oh, also privately message me. You do scare easily. Okay, so I will not give you the creepy one. Um, uh, privately message me a, a, an email address you would like your game to arrive in at in uh, okay so how about what's this one uh, ah, this looks fun gift to a friend send an email Okay, I have an email, copy, and you are the proud owner of something called Wildfire. Master the elements in this stealth game where everything burns. Use your elemental powers to start fires, freeze water, and move earth as you outsmart superstitious enemies in this mischievous 2D stealth game. Sounds good. Do, do, do. Um, oh, yeah. No, I haven't gotten a haircut. I don't know what you're talking about. Um, oh, I'm stretching. Oh, okay. Uh, okay. So lots to do today. Uh, first off, <laughs> um, we are, uh, uh, if you haven't already gotten into a group, um, or found a partner, which is basically the same thing, um, you have been put into a group or given a partner. Um, doesn't matter because, uh, I'm, I'm not in the room with you <laughs> here. Okay. Okay. I'll put out the smoke. Uh, uh, do, 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 do. There. That's much better. Now I put out the cigarette. It's fine. It's fine. Um okay. So uh <laughs> I wouldn't want to offend anybody with in class smoking. Um so you have a you should have a partner. Uh the group of three, um, because somebody dropped. I let I, I let people in uh, until there were twenty six people in this class, so everybody would have a partner. And somebody did drop. Go figure. Um, so we're back down to twenty five, but that's okay. We've uh, done it with twenty five before. It's fine. 
um the three person group make nine characters and do it round robin where one of you talks uh the other person writes then um we move on to the writer becomes the talker and the third person writes etc cetera, etc cetera. have nine characters you're only going to use uh actually five of them everybody's only going to use five of the six um but uh that is not work that is wasted uh you can use all nine of them that's fine it doesn't matter um more characters mean um uh, a richer world right um so okay so uh uh remember that five o'clock is right club is due and uh that's five o'clock today um and tomorrow let me just check uh bu -bu 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 -bu. um just assignments uh when quizzes due tomorrow at midnight at, at the same time these uh character sheets are due um and let me just say that um the character sheets there there are no wrong answers on the character sheets uh well no there are a few wrong answers um two of them have to be animals two have to be things and two have to be humans that's what we'll be checking on um all the other stuff is going to inform the story that you write and by the way animals can teach classes right animals can be anywhere um just proving it uh so just remember that uh will it's worth six points um so if you don't get uh uh all six um or all nine you won't get all all six points okay uh next um do, do, do. i gotta talk about making characters um brr, 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 let me go to <sighs> this um so um long time ago i went to a writing seminar um that well actually first um let's let's talk about glasner a little bit glasner says that uh a character is kind of like peeling an onion or it is what's known as the onion model of character um so uh just very quickly um and we can use this as part of our writing um uh on let's see i can go to text and go here um and type instead of writing poorly world oh, i don't like the green let's go to dark blue world mask right um and this is no i don't like that undo uh draw let me do this that's much better uh that is the the self that we show to everybody else out in the world um uh the 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 person you portray yourself to be to strangers um when they first meet you so uh nowadays i think the, the for you all um I, the joke is when you meet someone new, the first question they ask or you ask is what's your major? Um, once you get out of college, it'll be, oh, what do you do? Um, and that somehow defines you. Um, uh, or, or it, you know, are you married? Uh, are you in a relationship? Uh, do you have kids? Uh, do you not have kids? Um, uh, once, once you get out, um, where do you live is often, uh, uh, 
a signifier of what the world mask is um in my town um there are two zip codes and one is the quote unquote good zip code and the other is the not so good zip code um so uh uh when they say oh what what zip code are you in that that is code for uh uh how much money do you make um where where did you buy your house uh so uh these are the things that that you say in small talk but also you know i am an outgoing uh uh jovial uh happy person or i am uh a, a you know i am a creature of the night um it's said in everything from your um your clothes to your hairstyle uh we all wear uniforms of a sort um i i know i don't like wearing suits and ties because i feel like that's a uniform and yet the hilarious thing is the um the unbuttoned uh button down shirt over top of the uh the t-shirt or the polo shirt is its own kind of uniform right um uh when you go to um certain well when you go to disney world right um everybody's wearing disney crap why do you wear disney crap to disney world that's where you buy it it's not saying hey i've been to disney world because everybody else is at disney world with you so it's not like hey look at this cool place i went to it's it's a uniform of, of sorts to say i've been here before or i like this particular aspect um it's a really weird social phenomenon i think about things a lot like that okay so uh when we get past the world mask we peel away a layer um and we switch and we get to the self-image and this is how you think of yourself so um even though uh you may be outgoing in at at parties um that exhausts you and you just wish people would leave you alone um or uh you 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 can't seem to to figure out how to talk to people at parties um and you you all you want to do is talk to people and learn about other people um but you because your world mask is in the way um you you can't quite manage it um it's called social anxiety sometimes uh so uh there's you might think of yourself as uh here's the other thing uh, it's often called imposter syndrome i am terrible at this thing um say drawing pictures um but other people say oh my god you're so talented and all you can see is the faults right um so that's the difference between the world mask where yes i draw all the time but your self image is self loathing um, where you say i hate this this is terrible or when you're writing um uh the actual act of writing is very very difficult for you um it's it's very uh hard to write but having written something uh people think you're very good at it so um uh the the self is i am not good at something whereas out there people seem to say you are good at this or i am an artist uh i hate all my work um so all sorts of things to to go with self-image versus uh world mask let's peel another layer go another layer deeper and we get to 
the conscience, right? And this is, this is, it's S-C-I-E-N, conscience. Um, this is the little voice in your head that tells you um, whether things are going well, whether the things you're doing are right or wrong. Um, or, or at least what you think of as right or wrong. So the whole, I am a good person, um, even though I do bad things sometimes, right? Um, uh, the, the outgoing world mask is I'm a hell raiser, um, uh, but your, your self-image is I'm still a good person. Your conscience says, uh, everything that you've ever done has never hurt anyone, even though uh, you are a, a transgressor, you push boundaries. Um, or vice versa. Um, I'm totally freaking evil, right? I, I am bad and horrible, and I do bad things all the time, uh, and my conscience tells me that... Uh, uh, I'm, I'm, uh, uh, I'm not good, right? What is good? What is evil? Um, uh, well, now we're into philosophy and ethics, right? Because some people say there are absolute um, good and evil. Some people take a more relative view to it. Um, uh, some people say that the people who take relative views are by definition evil. Um, I, I don't really want to get into that as uh, unless uh, we're talking in terms of story terms. Um, so uh, if I'm making up a character who does bad things, uh, it's almost a cliche. It is a cliche. Um Good villains think they're right. Nobody says, ha, ha, I'm going to be uh, terribly evil and kick puppies. Um, they might say, uh, in order to accomplish this other thing, I am strong enough to kick a puppy even though I hate myself for it. Right? So, um, uh actually Marvel movies have been doing really well lately where the villains are right. They have a point. Um, uh, Killmonger in Black Panther, he, he's got a point. Uh, maybe his uh, methods are uh, not great, but um, why did Wakanda so isolate itself and stay out of the rest of the world um it's and let its people all around the world suffer for generations seems horrible um uh zemo uh from uh, uh winter no uh civil war um his entire family was killed in the, uh, the Slovenia or whatever it is, the Slovakia Accord thing. Um, and he doesn't think there should be superheroes running around blowing up buildings. Uh, he's got a point. Um, and finally, uh, we get to uh, the true self. Um. And that's that's the heart of it all, um, which is um, what's real here. Um, and one of the ways we reveal character is we put them in situations where we rip away the world mask, we rip away their self-image, uh, we have them uh, violate their own conscience, and... Uh, uh, then finally we get to what truly they they truly believe uh, what what they will do or or not do, right? So uh, uh, Luke Skywalker 
at the sure he turns to the dark side in uh uh return of the jedi um when he's fighting uh vader but in the end he throws the lightsaber away um and says i am a jedi like my father before me um and he he comes back to the light um i've spoiled return of the jedi sorry um okay so um having gone through all of these things and this is one way to uh, uh, write a story um is to say we're going to take uh this this person and we're going to strip away everything and that is a that we've seen this story over and over where a person who has everything gets progressively more torn down uh until they find their true inner inner core um and uh become a new better person okay but maybe we don't have time for all that so uh a very quick way to develop a character and it's part of your character sheets um so if you've already done it you might have uh um not quite understood it because i didn't explain it yet um but this comes from uh i I took a um, a writing seminar with um, uh, the lead writer of World of Warcraft, right? Um, and one of the things that they do uh, is they say, um, okay, we have one-dimensional, two-dimensional, and three-dimensional characters. So a one-dimensional character has one thing that defines them. Um, so the easiest uh, example is uh, if you've ever seen Forrest Gump, uh, his friend Bubba in the Vietnam War, um, all Bubba ever does is talk about shrimp. He talks about, he, he grew up on a shrimp boat and uh, the only thing you ever see that character do is just mumble about all the different ways to cook and eat shrimp. Um, pretty, pretty one dimensional. Bubba, uh, he's, he's kind and he's not too smart. So we could give him some other descriptors. Um, but mostly he's about shrimp. And in fact, uh, if you've ever eaten in a Bubba Gump shrimp company, that's a restaurant chain that was based on fictional characters in a movie. Um, okay. I've never eaten in one. I've seen them at various places. Um, okay. So uh, we, what we do is we uh, describe a character in some way. Uh, and this can be um, uh, physical or, uh kind of i don't know spiritual mental um so uh just off the top of my head uh uh let's go with um let's go with thin right um and that doesn't give me much to go with on a character if if the only thing we know about a character is they're thin, um, we can say they're painfully thin. Um, they're they're uh, weak. Um, they they don't have a lot of musculature. Um, so okay, so that's the character we got, but we don't know much about them other than they're thin. So we need something else. Um, and usually what we go and, and at this point, um, I wish if we were in person with each other, then, um, we would have done some improv and one of the improv exercises we do is called mirror compliment, where essentially somebody strikes a pose and, uh, somebody else comes out of the crowd and, they can either mirror that pose, which is basically uh, uh, take the same pose next to them, 
um, or they can compliment. And that is take a different pose that somehow relates to the first pose. And um, it's not, it's not, uh, there are no rules for what is a complimentary pose. Uh, it should somehow, um, uh, you know, uh, 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 inform that first pose so if for instance one person took up a pose where they're pointing up in the air looking at something um another person might come and um uh stand next to them and look down at the ground and now uh one person is looking up the other person is looking down um and that that starts a story so um what we want uh, with a, uh, describing a character, we've got a thin character. Uh, we need somehow to uh, complement that. Um, so let's say, uh, uh, actually, I'm going to type. Um, the thin character uh, constantly eating right um so uh this is a person who seems to be always hungry um and actually um let's let's get rid of that because i i asked for adjectives um not descriptors so let's say thin but hungry right they're they're uh uh yeah, but that, I don't like that either. Um, let's say thin, but uh, gluttonous, right? Um, so that means that they're constantly eating. They're more than they, they need to, but they can't ever uh, seem to uh, uh, fill up, right? So now that's that's still two dimensional, right? Because um, we've got it's all about food, right? Or at least we've got body, and we've got uh, something about their character. Um, they they the gluttonous thing can be. Um, not just food, but can be uh, possessions. So we need, in order to get a three-dimensional character or, or at least a more interesting character, we need a third kind of triangulation. Um, something that is less about uh, food and uh, appearance and more about their state of mind. Um, so um, uh, let's say uh, gluttonous people are never satisfied. Uh, so let's say ambitious, right? Um, so now we, we know something uh, about not just their relationship with food, but their, uh, their general what they want out of life uh we've got more um so uh we can make this character now uh, uh i'm thinking uh an incredibly um thin person uh how about let's say an athlete um who is always um working with their weight, uh, always wants to win, um, and, uh, constantly falling short and just, um, just trying for everything, overreaching, uh, what they're, they, they want, um, and, uh, uh, being frustrated and trying again. Um, that's a, that's an interesting character. So, um, 
it's a very quick way to to build out a character um you're going to do a bunch of other stuff on those character sheets but between uh the onion method and the three uh descriptions um three descriptors um you should get the start of a good character um then uh i'm gonna stop this share um then the other thing uh that we we're constantly doing is um the difference between prose and drama uh, and especially games um is in in prose we can get inside their heads um we can do things um like they thought um uh or they tried um we can i you can be, be from their point of view in drama um we can only we can only experience what they say or what they do um because we can't get in their head unless we start these weird monologues um and let me tell you there are plenty of uh, for in the entire history of drama um there are plenty of examples of characters stepping out and just telling the audience exactly what they're thinking and feeling. Um, beyond that, uh, in a game, um, what they say and what they do may be uh, incredibly different. So for instance, um, uh, well, in in uh the tomb raider series the the most recent tomb raider series um in the cutscenes, lara croft is appalled that she killed a dude right she's like ah, i killed i killed him ah, right um and uh in the gameplay when i'm controlling her uh she kills a hundred dudes she kills hundreds of dudes over and over again i think nothing of it because they're digital so um that's actually there's a name for that it's called ludo narrative dissonance that's where the game says one thing and the 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 story says another um going back to uh uh grand theft uh, grand theft auto 4 um where where your main character is like i just want out of this life but they keep pulling me back in and i am racing around the city happily shooting killing carjacking um just raising mayhem right that is ludo narrative dissonance uh we try to uh keep our stories uh and our narratives uh, at least in the ballpark with each other uh but players will be players right and they will do odd things uh okay um so uh once again make your six characters um i want to get into the hero's journey well no um Let's get into Tacoma. Oh, how do we like Tacoma? I enjoyed it. Yeah. It was a really, really liked cool the story. Game. Yeah. Fantastic. Amazing. Great game. Loved it. Good. Um, it's, um, it is essentially, um, well, so uh, you you kind of had a, a a different experience because I I gave you the content warning that things might seem scary, but everything will be fine. Um, it is a haunted um, space station, haunted. It's a haunted house um, where uh, we we uh, are determining what happened here 
right? Or at least it takes the trappings of the haunted house. Uh, uh, didn't you think uh, something bad had happened? Right? Um, were any of you scared? Or at least worried? Right when Minnie was landing, I knew something was wrong. <laughs> Um, we are used to, uh, the, the team that comes in after the bad things happen stories, right? Um, and in this case, uh, you got jump scared by the skeleton in the medical closet. Yeah. Um, uh, there's, there's one jump scare. I mean, this is alien without the alien, right? Um, here we are we've got we've got a space station uh you are sent to recover the ai um you got the achievement for putting the skull back woo um uh you are sent to recover the ai and that's all you're supposed to do and theoretically you can stick your little uh tablet in the the download thing stand there and never experience the game um if you didn't put the skull back you didn't beat the game come on nah uh you can eh, chivos um so uh the big question is what happened here so uh uh this comes down to two types of storytelling which is past and present action. Um, and we do a lot of this in level design where um, we want to tell a story um, of what happened here and the story of the environment um, as well as tell the story uh, of the present action as in what the player does. So just like... Um, uh, what I was just talking about, Ludo narrative dissonance. Um, you can do goofy stuff. You can dunk yourself in the basketball hoop. Sure. Um, you can uh, uh, run around. Um, you can, I mean, it kind of solves the, the problem. You know how in cutscenes where you actually have control of your character, um, but I'm thinking of Half-Life 2 and, and the Half-Life episodes where every cutscene is like, I'm Gordon Freeman, I can't talk, I know that. Um, and people are talking to me and I'm like jumping up and down, I'm getting in their faces, I'm, I'm walking all around, I'm jumping on countertops and I'm being a, just a goofball, right? Um, uh, cause that's what you do. Cause you know, it's gonna play out. They're gonna ignore everything you do. Um, but you're in the middle of this expositional cutscene thing. Um, here, uh, the cutscenes are the gameplay, right? Um, because it's about watching these things play out, uh, getting your various angles on it, jump in sure fine jump up and down walk through people do whatever you want it's all a hologram we've we've made the um the the game lore so to speak uh accommodate whatever goofy crap you want to do because no one's watching it's just you and a recording right so um at the same time, we build tension because it's clear these people aren't there. What happened to them? Uh, at the beginning, you can't get into the cryo uh, uh, lab, right? Um, so am I, am I correct in that? Because I didn't play it this year. I played it last year and I scrubbed through the video. Yes, you can't get to the cryo lab. Um, uh, so as you're playing, you at least the first section, uh, as I was playing, I'm like, you can see the pods through the door. Yes. So you know there are pods in there, um, but 
uh, they're closed. You don't know if there are people in there. Um, so at a certain point, you're like, oh, they they all put themselves in cryostasis and I'll find them, right? Um, and then more stuff becomes uh, clear. Um, and maybe they're not in cryo... Uh, uh, or some of them are, and some of them, but when you get to the, the, the ship that they're supposed to take off in, obviously bad things happen there. Uh, and it's a matter of, well, um, what, who died, right? <laughs> um, so it's kind of wonderful, um, that no one dies. Right. And at a certain point, the other, the other kind of creeping thing is, am I the bad guy? Right. Did anybody think you were the bad guy? Yes. Um, thank you, Ethan. Um, that I'm here to basically kill their AI and cover up whatever happened. Um, and honestly yeah yes you are uh but you don't do that um so uh uh this is a game that plays with player expectations right this is a game that says you know how these stories go right you know this kind of story this is one of the the haunted house science fiction stories uh, it's a haunted space station or a haunted spaceship. Um, and the the way it, it goes down is you get a small group of people in your enclosed space and something bad happens to one after another of them until uh, uh, there, there's just Sigourney Weaver and the cat, right? Um, and uh uh by knowing those stories you are building your own narrative in your head um where things are going to go bad things when when is the twist coming when is the shoe going to drop that bad things are happen to all these people right so um they did this once before um their previous game was Gone Home, and that was a literal uh, haunted house. Um, the and, and I recommend everyone play it. It's been free eight billion times in various uh, spring sales or giveaways. Um, Gone Home is just as good. Um, and the setup there is that uh, you have um, you have spent the last year. You're a college kid in 1995. Um, you're a woman, and uh, you've just spent the last year. You're you're like junior year abroad, um, and uh, while you were abroad, your family moved. Your family moved to a new house because uh, mom got a new job. Um, and dad's like a writer, so uh, uh, he can do his work anywhere. And so uh, I forget why, but no one picked you up at the airport and the game opens on a dark and stormy night and you are walking up to this house that you have never been to before because you were away in Europe when they moved there um and uh the big question once again it seems empty um everybody's gone where why is why was is no one home uh to welcome me back after a year um and that's the discovery of of the game is you wander around the house and uh you figure out what happened to mom dad and your little sister uh, and your little sister is, I don't know, 16, 17. Um, 
and uh, uh, she has her own story. Well, mom has her own story and dad has his own story. Um, but uh, A, thunder lightning, B, deserted old house. Um, and as you wander around, it's like, well, what happened to the people here? And things seem out of place. Um, and something bad happened. Something It seems like something bad happened. And there's actually another layer to the story because... Uh, they inherited the house from uh, an uncle and uh, he he was an old man and he died of natural causes. Um, and so you get another layer of looking at his life in this old house uh, and and how he grew up and what happened to him. Um, and there's there's exactly one jump scare in the whole thing. Um, but it's not like a, something jumps out and screams at you. Um, it's uh, a light goes out. Um, so uh, they play with tropes, uh, both in Gone Home and here in Tacoma. Um, they know what their their players expect from certain kinds of games, and then they uh, subvert those tropes because nothing bad happens in Tacoma. Um, everybody gets out alive. You're not a bad guy. You're a good person. Um, we have uh, peeled away the layers of your character. Um, you have seen everything that happened in here and uh, all the people are good characters. I mean, they're all flawed, but fully realized people there are no like, oh my God, what a stupid decision. You know, don't go up in the attic. Uh, there's there's a horrible thing up there. Why are you going up in the attic? Oh, you're going up to the attic because the plot tells us that we need you to go to the attic. And that's, that's the other thing I want to talk about character. Um, plot comes out of character. Uh, there's a guy, a uh, playwright, um, won the Nobel Prize for a play called St. Joan, um, which he was, I think, 92 when he wrote St. Joan. He's very old. Uh, he's a guy named George Bernard Shaw. Um, and he would write, uh, St. Joan was uh, a play about uh, Joan of Arc. Um, he wrote... Uh, uh, Caesar and Cleopatra. He wrote a, a number of historical dramas, right? And in one interview, uh, he was asked if um, if he did a lot of historical research uh, in order to to bring the truth out in his plays. Um, and and I'm paraphrasing because I didn't look up the quote. Um, but he said something like, uh, I do nearly no research. Um, I, I find out who the people were. And basically, if, if you can tell me who the people were, I can tell you what happened. Um, so uh, anytime you're, you're looking at a, a movie or a TV show, or a game and saying, this is dumb. The, the, why are they doing that? Why the, the, they shouldn't be doing that. That's the stupidest thing ever. It's because their character has not been well enough defined uh, in order to show, in, in order to give a reason for that character to do that thing. Um, they are doing it because the plot dictates they do it. Whereas if you're writing from character, then uh, you, you say, what would the character do in this situation? And that's the thing that happens, right? And you move on. The, and uh, uh, the hard part is... Um, Real people generally want to de-escalate situations. So if two people are arguing, 
um, the tendency is to to try to bring the the uh, emotional level down, and in drama, uh, we want to bring the emotional level up. We want things to come to a head. We want to continually raise the stakes um, and and have our excitement over time, right? Uh, we want the the excitement curve to go up. Um, whereas uh, in real life, I, and this isn't true of everybody, um, and and certainly not true of people in games, uh, because in in a game you will do things in a game that you would never do in real life because it's a game and it doesn't matter and so i'm gonna throw this grenade in the middle of everything just to see what will happen and if if something goes badly i'll reload and try something else um once again ludo narrative dissonance uh where and we'll get to more of that when we get to facade uh, but, uh, um, ba -ba -ba. okay. So, uh, uh, everything starts with character. Um, that's why I have you make the, the characters first and then write the story so that you, you can keep asking yourself, what would this character do in this situation? All right. But we're going to be writing to a scaffolding. Um, and that comes tomorrow with the hero's journey. Uh, so, okay. So I am out of time. Um, I would also just like to say, as far as writing groups, get in contact with your partner, um, send them an email, get on the discord, send, I, I realize people have funny handles on the discord, so it might not always be obvious, uh, uh, from your partner's name. Um, but you can certainly send them an email uh, based on uh, uh, their name and WPI email. You can just type it in and get their email. Um, get in contact with each other. Set up a time to, to get on a Zoom call or get in person on a park bench with the wind blowing um, to, to sit down and talk through these six characters. Remember, all six characters are going to be in the same story. So uh, uh, keep that in mind. And it's going to be a hero's journey story, um, which you've already read about. So we will be talking about that tomorrow. I'll go through the whole hero's journey. Um, any questions? Is there anything DM should know for D&D? Tomorrow, I will get all the DM email addresses. Um, and uh, over the weekend, you will uh, pick from uh, pre-gen characters. And uh, on Monday evening, you will all play D&D &D over Roll20, roll20.net. Uh, so uh, if you don't already have a Roll20, uh, account, make a Roll20 account, and we'll have more details tomorrow and over the weekend. Uh, uh, your your DM will contact you with uh, uh, character, pre-gen characters and times and a Zoom call and that sort of thing. Uh, so uh, we'll take probably the last, I don't know, 10 minutes of class tomorrow to figure that out. Okay. Okay. Uh, then I will stop recording and I will see you all tomorrow.